Does anyone really need a water-cooled GPU? Is a question I've been asking myself ever since I received this. The brand new MSI Supreme X Liquid RTX 1490. Does the 1490 actually need liquid cooling to keep temperatures and performance under control? And for those with big bucks to spend, is a design like this actually worth considering? We don't normally do reviews here on the channel, but a water-cooled GPU certainly tweaked my attention. So let's take a look, shall we? Now let's begin by taking a look at the basic design premise of the 1490 and MSI's interesting spin on the design. Quite literally. I'll leave the bad puns there. There's no more bad puns in this video. Now the 1490 is a pretty monstrous card. Anyone who saw the founders reviews land yesterday will have seen that it's two and a half gigahertz clock speeds. Something we've not really seen on a GPU for a long time. 24 gigs of VRAM, the same as a 3090 Ti. And of course, Nvidia's DLSS3 technology, which is a real game changer when it comes to performance, something that you have to pick up a 40 series card for. DLSS3 is hardware specific as well as being a software tool. The 4090 obviously impresses in terms of raw performance, but there is obviously one key sticking point with the card that no one can quite shake off. And that's the price. It's a pattern we've seen across the industry recently. Ryzen 7000, more expensive. The motherboards for it, more expensive than last gen. The 1490, what's this $500 more than the 3090 cost? When of course, in that market, you could actually buy it. Now, obviously adding basically a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler sounds like a great idea. And in terms of temperatures, not to ruin the conclusion of this video, it most definitely works. But it doesn't really help the key problem that I have with this graphics card, which isn't performance, it's price. Now, adding a liquid cooler like this inevitably adds way more cost to the design. Rather than having a standard three fans, you've got two large 120 mils, a radiator, and I mean liquid to contend with. That's gotta have higher costs in terms of wrong installations and RMAs and tech support that MSI will receive. It's not just the design that's more expensive, it's everything that comes with it. Now, don't get me wrong, this is pretty cool. If you're looking for an out of the box solution that doesn't involve custom looping your PC, this makes a lot of sense. Temperatures were considerably lower than the non water cooled counterparts, and we did witness a few more frames per second too. The premise with aftermarket GPUs is simple and always has been. The only reason you would pick up this design rather than a reference design or the last gen air cooled Supreme is because the better cooling performance not only looks better and is often quieter, it also, of course, allows you to deliver more power to the GPU, given, of course, that performance upside. And that's where MSI do potentially have a tangible argument. If you're already spending $1,500 or more on a graphics card, latest pricing as always will be linked below. I mean, heck, what's another $200 on a slightly better cooler, especially when it's the top end card? Does this thing top the performance charts against its air cooled rivals? On the whole, yes. And for those of you who want to take a very literal approach to the best of the best, it might just be worth considering. Noise and thermals are also another great point to illustrate. With 220 mil fans on the radiator and then a further looks to me like an 80, 90 mil fan on the graphics card, it of course does allow for quieter performance as these fans are larger, meaning they can run slower. And of course, you're also taking advantage of the far more efficient heat dissipation method, which is of course using the liquid and the radiator to equalize the temperature out and make the temperature on the GPU chip much lower. That also makes this card a bit of an overclocking dream. Of course, if you want to push things to the absolute max, a custom loop can never be defeated as you can run that liquid into far more radiators, giving you far more cooling capacity than what's on offer here. It's also interesting to see MSI go for a two fan design, a 240 mil rad. The Gigabyte 3090 Ti we looked at a few months ago went for a 360 mil design. Arguably a bit more overkill, but it ditched the fan just here. Now there is one very, very cool advantage a card like this has that's definitely not going to be for everyone, but is worth considering. Those of you looking to build a small form factor build in a mini ITX case might actually find this to be a good option. Typical 4090s can be over 300 50 mil. The founders is 336 and that's by far and away the most compact design we've seen yet. And that means you need massive cases with massive support for GPUs, with even standard ATX cases not fitting the new 4090s. This then is a very solid workaround. Pretty much all ATX
GTX cases nowadays will support at least a pair of 240s, if not a 240 and a 360, making, believe it or not, this fairly behemoth design actually a great option for those of you looking to use a more compact chassis. It takes advantage of the size in the right areas that are easy to fit. Rather than having a GPU that just keeps going and going and going and going and going, you get the point. Now, it's built well. I like the design and it uses NVIDIA's brand new power collector, which is of course digital over last gen, and is capable of delivering up to 600 watts of power. The founder's design uses 450. This is gonna be closer to the 500 mark. But the only real way to determine if this extra power is actually of any use is to look at performance. In Apex Legends, first of all, you can see that our Liquid X4090 tops the charts in quite a considerable fashion, beating out our Zotac Hollow and Founders and Aorus Edition cards. You can also see how it stacks up against the rest of the 30 series GPU lineup and AMD's current gen 6950 XT. An impressive start so far, but is this picture a consistent one across the board? In a game like GTA 5, a slightly older title, the answer is no, for the simple reason that actually the 4090 is so powerful it hits the frame rate cap. GTA 5 is limited to 187 FPS, a number that the Founders and MSI Liquid X easily hit. It's interesting here actually to see how well the Founders does compared to some of the AIB cards and quite a surprising result. Move through into the likes of Valorant and once again our results are pretty similar. We're gaining around 12 frames per second using the MSI Liquid X Supreme Edition, beating out the Aorus 4090 by 12, the Zotac Hollow Edition by 20 frames, so not an insignificant amount of frame rate, and the Founders by the same amount. In COD Warzone, we just compared all the latest 4090s to focus in on that cooler. At 4K high settings with DLSS cranked to performance mode, the MSI Liquid card once again came out on top in pretty impressive fashion, beating out the next best card by 17 FPS, or around about 7-8%. Move through into the likes of Fortnite at 1080p competitive settings, and all of our GPUs, not just the MSI Liquid X card, but all the 4090s are certainly restrained a bit by a CPU bottleneck. The Liquid X still comes out on top by about 8 frames per second, but when we're talking a 335 FPS average frame rate, 8 is certainly in the margin of error at around 2% of our results. 2% could just be the difference between your GPU having a good or bad day, or the room you're testing in being a few degrees more warm. Move through into Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered, and it actually does show that the cooler isn't always king. It does beat out Zotac's Hollow Edition, which is a cheaper edition graphics card, but falls short of the Aorus 49 by 4 frames a second, margin of error stuff here really, and the founders by 20, something that certainly isn't margin of error. It's impressive to see our 4090 perform quite so well, but does it pull a definitive lead here? Not exactly. It's the same story in F1, where here we pulled in 229 FPS, sitting higher than our other 4090 cards, but lower than Zotac's Hollow Edition. It just goes to show, call it isn't everything, although it's certainly nice to see the MSI Liquid X 4090 top the charts the majority of the time. Another game where it tops the charts pretty definitively is Cyberpunk. We tried out the new Cyberpunk 2077 benchmark mode at 4K high and RTX enabled. First using DLSS but the 2.0 tech. Here we pulled in 100 FPS on average, giving us 5 more frames per second than the Founders card, and nearly 10 more than our Zotac GPU. Enable DLSS 3, and the results are obviously a bit better, giving us much higher frame rates. It's one of the many great advantages of the new NVIDIA gen, something you've probably heard a lot of by now. Beating out the 4090 Founders by 4 frames, the Zotac Hollow Edition by 6, and the Aorus 4090 by 7. Is this card then a definitive 4090 King? Sort of, it provides better performance, but you should expect expect that for the price that you're paying. Looking at our temperature graphs as well, it also runs a few degrees cooler on average than all the other designs, giving you great overclocking headroom. And as you can see, it does so in a much smaller form factor, providing of course you've got room for the integrated radiator. So then, with that in mind, should you actually buy a 4090? And if so, should you actually consider buying the 4090 liquid cooled version? To answer the first question first of all, let's keep this a little bit simple. It depends. Now, the 4090 is an incredible graphic card. I don't think AMD are going to come close with their 7900X or whatever they call it, making this truly an enthusiast king for those who want the best of the best. But it will cost you a lot of money. And who needs the power of a 4090? Arguably, a 3090 Ti for under $1,000, those deals will come following the release of this card, is a far better value proposition, even for those with money to burn. 
But if you have got the money to burn and you're dead set on DLSS 3 and having the performance of a 4090, this might just be worth considering. Great for smaller form factor cases, awesome for low temperatures and pushing overclocks further, and a great solution for those who don't want to create a custom loop. Is it particularly game changing over a standard 3 fan air cooled design? And does it look quite as impressive? No. A good card on its own right, but a design that certainly won't be for everybody. And you know what? That's okay. If you enjoyed this one, make sure to get subscribed. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.